Hey, Timmy here. I talk about my journey towards becoming a full-time master's student in the performing arts. So, how all this started is when I attended an audition for the East 15 School of Acting back in March. The director of the school, Professor Leon Rubin, came down to look for talents in several cities in Asia and I went for the KL station. Actually, they came down last year, but I think I was busy doing a show or a rehearsal. So I didn't manage to go for that. This year, I made a promise to myself to go for it, and I did. I wasn't thinking about going to an acting school so much as getting professional feedback when I sign up for it because I know they, audition free of, uh, they are auditioning free of charge. If I'm not mistaken, if you're auditioning in London, you actually need to pay £50. But they're auditioning in KL for free, so why not? So the whole process was, there was an online form that I had to fill out and then I filled that up as if I was going to attend the school, even though I really wasn't even though I wasn't really sure yet. And then you had to put your two monologues, one Shakespearean monologue and one contemporary monologue, and you schedule in your audition, and that's it. You just go for the audition. And, and, and I think the process really got me, and the process made me think about what I really wanted to do, and this just felt like something that I needed to do, because I've been doing this in KL for several years now, and it just feels like, the right step to take to move to the next level and yeah. So here came audition day and I went for it like I would any other audition. I think I was coming from, oh yeah, I was coming from a short course um, called Actors Gym. Shout out to my Actors Gym classmates. Um, I was coming from there, I left early halfway through class and I went for the audition um, and I, there was a easy reg <laughs> there was a easy registration at the audition venue which was KL Pack. Um, sign up for that really simple, waited for my turn and then I just went in and I did my two monologues. My Shakespearean monologue is from Hamlet, Laertes, Act 1, Scene 3 where he's talking to Ophelia, his sister, and my contemporary monologue, well it's actually, it really isn't that contemporary because it's quite an old play. Tom Wingfield from The Glass Menagerie because I, I love that play, I wish I, one day I would be able to actually play Tom Wingfield but anyways, I did my two monologues and they had little tweaks they asked me to do my Shakespearean monologue again because apparently my diction is bad. Um, <laughs> and they said I was very, it was very smart of me to pick an American play because apparently the diction for American is easier. Um, anyways, after my monologue, they just asked me to sit down and talk and we talked about money, we, we talked about um, why I want to do this because I, I filled up, like I said, I filled out a phone as if I was going to go to the school but at that point in time I wasn't sure yet but I was gearing up for the possibility of actually attending so I told them I'm doing this because I want to get a proper education on acting which is true um, I've always wanted to get some formal education for acting but I didn't really think it would actually happen until now haha <laughs> haha to cut the story short, they told me I was the last candidate and they had the plane to catch so they would just cut to the chase and tell me on the spot and they told me I got in on the spot. Um, they said they would email in the documents in two weeks time but at that point in time I was just stunned. stunned. They talked about if I'm not sure if I'm coming to take the two year program because it's just easier to apply for a two year visa and cut it down short if I want to come home after one year rather than taking the one year program and applying for the one year visa and when I wanted to extend to come home and take my second year visa but as they were saying all of that I was just I was just zoned out I wasn't really thinking about that because it just felt so surreal that they would want me so I got out of the room still a little bit shocked and the receptionist was asking me oh so how was the audition I I told her something I told her it went well and I think I got in and she was like ah but I still wasn't really processing it at the time. Then I walked out of the KL pack and all the way into my car, I slammed the door shut, I turned on the engine thinking about, oh, I need to get back to Access Gym, I need to get back to the second part of class, I just need to get back to class. And I was scrolling on my phone, looking through Google Maps to find the quickest way to get back to class, and that was when it snapped. It sank in, and it just felt like my American Idol moment, and I just broke down in tears. I was just falling my eyes out and I 
felt like I couldn't take it alone so I actually called a few friends. I wish I had some kind of recording of me in the car on that day but because I was using my phone to call some of my friends just to talk to them about this because I was I just couldn't contain myself anymore when it sank in um, so I just I just bawled my eyes out and, and I think about 10, 15, 20 minutes later I felt better I just got myself together again and I just drove back to class and actually on the way back to class I time and again it's just the tears just came back again but I was keeping my composure because I still had a class to go to my eyes were already puffy but you know I don't know why I was still trying to, to you know hold it together um, so I arrived back in class my whole face just looked like I just cried like nobody's business but nobody in class I mean none of my classmates said anything because they were very focused on their exposition we were doing biomechanics and the teacher instructor Nicole she asked me something along the lines of are you okay and I remember her saying the audition went too well or, or something like that it was uh, a moment but I just I brushed her off and I tried my best to focus back in class and we all talked about it after class and my classmates were happy and glad and surprised and just all these pleasant feelings that they had for me thank you guys and let's fast forward a little bit sure enough two weeks later the documents came in and again I couldn't believe that you know this is happening to me and I thought about it I talked to several people about it and more and more the decision to go kind of just sank in and now it was just time to look for money because the school does not give scholarships the most they could give me is a 4,000 pound discount because I graduated first class with honors for my undergraduate. Wow. But the discount is only like slightly more than a fifth of the whole program fees because the whole thing's actually 15,000 pounds a year and the program is two years. So you do the math because I'm very bad with math. So I tried to look for money and by June I didn't have remotely close to that amount so I told them that I am in a financial situation and what can they do to help me like what else other than the discount they told me they still want me um, they're gonna give me time to look for money so they're gonna defer me to next year and so with that I have about a year's time to look for money and I am having ideas I am actually not gonna put all of my eggs in one basket so besides looking for money, I'm actually going to apply for more schools in the UK and in the US. Because uh, from what I know, and I've confirmed this with a few people, the US is generally more generous about giving scholarships. So I'm gonna do that. So in the coming videos, I will be talking about scholarships and the schools that I will be applying for and maybe even walk through some of the application process. So stay tuned for more. Remember to follow and subscribe. Thank you, bye!